All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got your watch list coming in to July 2nd, 2019. I got our special guest, Olivier, on the phone. He's going to tell us a little bit about some real estate in our argument last time and the Hong Kong riots. So let's start with real estate, man. You bought that two point something million high rise in New York. Some of the viewers said, don't buy it. I agreed with them. You bought it. At, have things changed for the better or worse? They've changed for the better. Okay. Uh, so now what I bought it for 2.6, it's valued at 2.8, 25, whatever, you know, conservatively, that's the value of the apartment currently today. Uh, I could, I, I could have three months ago, I was able to rent it at 10,000. Today I'm able to rent it at 12,500. Oh, wow. Damn. All, all right. So even the rental comps are going up. And, you know, we were talking other real estate. That's how we got talking about this again. But now, where do you think the market's heading? I think the market's going to go. It depends what you're talking about. Like stuff that I bought, which is like very micro level apartments here in New York and up and coming areas. The value's going to continue to go up, in my opinion. But if you're going to buy, you know, let's say 47th and Park, if you're going to buy the tallest building in New York City. All of those are just going to get trumped by the next tallest building in New York City. And your value's going to go no pun intended, right? For the for the Trump thing. <laughs> but everybody watching now, you guys need to post your watch list and say, do you agree with real estate with what Olivier's saying, or do you agree that it's too high? Post that below. And now this Hong Kong stuff. So you are, you know, you being Chinese and well, I don't know what. How do I even? I don't know how to describe it. You got a background there. You work there. You do all that. What is up with this Hong Kong stuff? Uh, what do you mean by that? It's is what do you think of it? Is this something? To, is this something people should be worried about with uh, affecting the market? I got asked that question today. Oh, affecting the market? I I, I don't think there's going to be that much movement. If there is, there could be some type of. It's going to be stagnant. Honestly, I, I really don't think that there's going to be that much movement like that. Yeah, I really don't. I think it's very normal. Everyone in Asia is going to act very normally to this. Uh, it's not, you know, to the West, it may seem like this whole charade that's going on. But in reality, you know, Hong Kong has done this many times before. This time it's very much more pronounced and amplified. You know, it's going to be normal. Ah, it's act. So there you go. A normal occurrence. All right. Well, Olivier, thank you. Everybody else. Thank Olivier. Let's get to the watch list. So let me know how you guys like this format. We're starting with the watch list and we're going to get to the keys. But right off the bat, we saw a lot of interesting moves from the value stock. So I want to go over the list of the top ones. I did make a trade on McDonald's. We'll get to that once we get to the option chain. But the key with this is noticing when do they start diverging or going from the market. And each one of these moved in their own way. But these are the ones I like. You know, we've been eyeing Home Depot for a long time. When you do see it move, it, it, again, with the value stocks, they're slow when they're slow, but they will catch up with stuff. That's why paying attention to if they diverge or not or where they're at you know, relative to the market is very, very important. I'm going to be watching Home Depot to see you know, it, there's all, all of them have these levels and these top levels. And that's the thing. Really, if one of them goes, most of them will. However, you have to be careful because we've seen this with, with one of them I'm going to show you next. It doesn't always work like that. So some of these could be laggers. And that is going to be really the key with anything. As you see the market moving, some stuff is going to go with it and some stuff won't. And that's, you know, we're going to talk about that when we get to Boeing. But I like Home Depot. I'm going to eye that again. The solid number ranges are really just like kind of like McDonald's. That 208, 207 number, even that 205 is, is a little bit below it. But then anything past here, if they really start to make those moves, and again, what you want to pay attention for, do value stocks go up with the market? Because you want to see, again, that rotational element is going to be very, very key in a time like this. I like Home Depot. Next one is going to be Starbucks. Now, this one, it could sometimes lag, but even when they do good and are holding up, they're good. I was going to get a trade on this. Again, the options were slightly cheaper than the one I like, but the thing is, you don't know how much it's going to move, and you got to be careful. You know, this, it looks like a big, big move. That's like $8, and granted, that's, that's, that's more than 10% from that level, but... Even then, when you're playing options and you're trying to get in the money, this may not be the best play. But I like Starbucks if it does start to do anything and diverge and show either extreme strength. As far as weakness, I'm not too big of a fan of shorting these companies. Again, the only one I really like is McDonald's. Now, I did grab a play on this. The fact that it touched near 210, it blew my mind and um, because I didn't never expected McDonald's to do this at least that quickly. I was, thought it would have more trouble at 207. And really, you see it closing below there. But the fact that it kind of went up there shows us a lot. McDonald's is going to be my favorite one. And again, my logic is really the minute you kind of see McDonald's go, 
that would be one I'd actually be wanting to short. But even then, it's it's overall history. Even since this bounce in January, it's been a good one. And even, again, on the yearly chart, you know, the, the McDonald's has been killing it. All of these ones have been killing it. I don't have the other one up there. But Walmart, this is the one that, again, it will move a little bit differently. And pay attention. You saw McDonald's. It, it, it kind of looks like it had the same exact move. But the difference is they closed down 1%, whereas you could see Walmart, it closed up and it has a very similar move. But Walmart could be one that could somewhat lag. And you could even see, even when we pull it up, you could see how it was with the market overlaid with the SPY. But look at McDonald's. It kind of had a, a higher beta, if you if you would call it, at, at to some degrees. But then when the market dropped, it didn't really come down as much with it. That's why it has been a, a real powerhouse of one of these value stocks. And you could compare it to Home Depot, you could see, has just moved almost on par with the market. So each of them operates in their own way, but they have unique factors. That's why once you could kind of see what the market's doing, you, you could pick your poison. I like that one. And lastly, uh, I don't think I, I have the other one up there. Oh, no, it went away. But UPS, as well as FedEx, transports in general. So you could even see the divergence that, that's going here. And even with transports, if you look at the ETF, IYT, it, it did bounce a lot with that. So some of these companies individual, you know, FedEx did lower guidance not too long ago. Uh, even, you know, UPS is going to be next with their earnings. And let me say that I'm going to say this with the earnings when we get to it. Prepare for earnings season. It is right around the corner, two weeks away. You could do, I, I've been showing it live every day. You could be getting plays that are exposing you to everything right now and covering earnings for less than $100. If you sign up now, make sure you're watching the watch list and attend the live stream. We're live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. Make sure you drop a like if you find this video helpful thank you but in all actuality that you you guys could find these opportunities you gotta you know seek and you shall find but be smart with it and really stretch that dollar when it comes to time and these opportunities because you are seeing how volatile the market is even today gapping to, up to all-time highs still closing at all-time highs but selling off and this and that keep your eye out for that moving on to the next list this one i think this was just the last one i went up on so i guess we're gonna have to talk about it but square uh this is even gonna relate it to the financial stocks i want to look at those but square had i think it had some frivolous news today and that could have affected the stock it still went up there but again most stocks did the same thing if that news develops you know usually now even if one piece of news may sound a little weird the weirder the news or the i guess the less meaningful it is like apparently somebody uh, was sent a receipt for their medical stuff to their friends and they use Square, yada, yada, yada. When does it really become an issue that's going to affect this stock like something like Boeing? It is when it happens again. When you see the same issue or problem get discussed a lot or, or it hits the wire, you know there now, okay, has more meaning. Boeing did the same thing. One crash, okay, that was bad. People got worried. Stock came back up. Second time, oh, no, 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 no. That's not good news. So watch out for that. But what I want to get to, and I'll say this, I made this play today. The option contracts, I forgot to put this in the watch list So yesterday, but it was the pricing. I'm looking for like $7 out of the money or $6 out of the money for $0.60 cents or less. The option chain on NVIDIA was holding that. The issue was we bought it too early in the morning. Even though the options went down, it maintained that same ratio. And it makes sense because Thursday the market is closed and we have an early day, I believe, the day before. So option contracts are going to be a little bit weird this week, even some of the stock movements. That's why what we see this week could be very pivotal and it could even tell us a lot. But I like NVIDIA and this brings up everything in general. You saw the good news with the Huawei ban. The chip stocks were, were some of the leaders today. We talked about it yesterday. They gapped up. They came down. They still closed up just like the overall market. But now wait for even possible divergence. But it give it either a day or two, then the trend could continue unless you know acted upon by equal or opposite force. So I still like NVIDIA. I like that play. The problem is I bought it early. It doesn't mean I'm going to average down on it. It means I just have to wait it out. Uh, that's why I try to limit the amount of capital on it. But And you can see buying too early. But we'll see how it plays out. NVIDIA is at least the more volatile of these. But one of the other ones I brought up, Keys, I told you guys to look at it. I contemplated buying this one. It had its rip. It eventually came down, but it held its gains a lot better of any of them and again keysight was a, a a more recent ipo you could say to a degree you know 2015 or 2014 2015 but at these levels you know it, it starts to just do its own little thing and, and i still like it but the problem is as of now it's not really a big mover so the options have this own 
pricing to it they may look cheap even after this whole move i think they only went up about 50 percent which is good but you know if you're only buying you know i'm trying to again in nvidia i'm buying one option for 40 dollars. if you're saying oh i'm gonna buy two three hundred that's that's you if you want to do that but seeing with everything in the market you know I'm, I'm sticking to my my guns which is going small you know sprinkling it out there pushing things to the wall watching out for the frogs and the ihop i mean this sounds really weird now maybe i should use some bigger words beta theta blame but i like this one it's gonna be good but even in general watch how the trend persists with the chip stocks that's going to be something to watch out for next is roku this one came up a lot uh today because this was a huge pump fake but again relating it to another one i'm gonna show you disney but even netflix you know they all kind of did their own things today but roku it could be good i like it the thing i do like about it it's still now you know watching near this support because if it does fall this could be something on the downside or if you watch some of the competitors it does get some gas it could be good but the thing you have to watch out for is the pricing and again don't be afraid to give this one time i think a lot of people uh they you guys love roku it's it's one that people would get in on a lot so keep your eyes out for that but also watch the the other companies that are in relation to it and lastly we got unh and now this one was very unique today because it kind of sold off really really big and again it was kind of the nature in which it did it relative to the market but comparing it now even to like anthem anthem did the same thing but closed up so again unh closed down a percent but then you look at like cigna very different moves it was going up when anthem and uh unh were coming down but watch the healthcare i still got my eye on the biojet but the key to all of them is simply going to be watching for that not only divergence but the rotation does the spy go up and it brings healthcare down or, or vice versa keep your eye on that one and now moving on our favorite and i have more stocks to talk about with this but boeing you can see on the stream today uh it's the recaps up there we discussed boeing and how to play it it's the same logic i've been telling you guys it's going to be a gapper and what happened today was unique so if you didn't watch that technical video with volume and interpreting all that vwap Go check it out. I posted it on Saturday, but it actually made a move intraday. Nothing too big, nothing crazy velocity, but still five bucks top to bottom. But even from the top of where it was at, that was a $10 move all in all today. Pretty decent. It did close down more. Some of the other stocks like Raytheon also had moves. And again, Raytheon could be related. And I keep my eye on this uh, to the UTX deal. And we'll see. You have to really see the effect it had the first time. You know, it's kind of already gave back a lot of it from the news. So it's going to be interesting, but now seeing where it's at, this could start to get ugly too. Really ugly, actually. You know, so I, I like Raytheon. The thing that's kind of kept me from it has just been the deal drama, uh, which I don't like because I, I, it's just going to be like Boeing. It'll give you the same, just random, oh, pops this and that. But we did play plays on Boeing. We held, We noticed at one point the premium on the Julys that we got last week, they came back to break even and slightly below, but not low enough for me to buy back. Because again, with three or four days decayed now, that's 50% of the contract and they're just slightly at what we paid. That is still expensive, but I, I held them. I didn't average down. I did grab a put spread, which we'll go over. And then, you know, as it dropped here, I did buy a call around here on the weekly. So I, I said this, I'm going to go both ways. I said this on stream, I'm chasing Boeing. And what I mean by that, I'm going to be looking at it every single day, you know, week by week. I'm not really going to get frustrated with it because, you know, I'm going to allocate an amount of money to just go in on it, you know, on, on either side and just take advantage of the volatility and what's happening. But overall, I am bearish in a longer term. And one thing I really came to the conclusion of today, they're going to, you know, it could make some moves. It might go down to the nearest support. There's two or three weeks away from earnings. I think that is when you're going to see any sort of move and it would at least justify the company to drop on the earnings as opposed to something else. But I like that. And the key is tomorrow, where does it gap or, uh, gap up or down at? And it might, it could open flat, which will be interesting. But this 354 level, if it breaks below there, again, it did come down there. And I explained this to people. It didn't hold there and it wasn't there strong. If that does break through, then the next level is like 347 or 342, I think. It has it has more way down before it really catches support. And then again, considering everything and now the bad news, there's more incentive for people to react. But if it doesn't break there, um, that's why I did get a bounce play on it because, you know, don't underestimate this stock's ability to get squeezed, especially with all of this negative sentiment. But Josh, the FAA said the... No, no. Watch the play. Watch the stock. Don't, you know, that news is important, but how is that news going to digest is what you guys really have to keep your eye on. And that's what I'm saying. It, it, it's just a nice little messed up game here. And you got to understand how to space it out 
Don't get caught with the short-term contracts. And if you are, you know, I'm getting short-term contracts because I have mid-term and long-term contracts. I'm covered in earnings. I'm covered before earnings. I'm even covered after earnings. And I'm covered even on the week. And that's what I mean. And, you know, both sides, you could go small amounts if there is going to be big volatility. But the issue with Boeing is when the music stops. And it, it could do this because at one point, it is just going to hit this, this lever and out of nowhere, the volatility will stop and it will cuck for three or four days, stay there, and it will decay everything. So the key, just like this morning, you buy it when they're cheap. You don't want to buy it after the move is there. And, you know, that's why it's just all about sprinkling it out and understand how IV even affects it, even if you're buying a bounce play. That's a very, very important factor. So watch Boeing. The next one, banks, like I said, now Wells Fargo and XLF. If anything, energy and banks were the real holding up of the market today, even despite the chip and every and, and the chip makers too. But those were actually the number one sectors, and it was there for a reason. Besides, you know, the Nasdaq was up a, a, a much larger portion, but it did come down and, and level out. But I like the banks. I have I don't have any other set plays set up except some of those longer term XLF spreads. So I'm gonna keep my eyes out for though. But how banks play, this is gonna happen when we talk to the key, the keys for the day. But lastly, Disney, it, it did have a, a bigger move today and it's looking good and actually even related to that Qualcomm, I like this one the best. It dropped, but as you can see, it just sold off instantly. It was going to make its move, but the way it gapped up this morning, the contracts got really expensive and then they came down. Those are good for some frogs because you, you are seeing what they were valued at and you could kind of see what, what's there that's going to move relative to the time frame. So I had July 19th and again, those went up like four or 500% today and then came down. Uh, again, early in the morning, they were up that much and slowly went to 300, then 100% up, and then it eventually just came back to break even. So those are the plays I like for the frogs, and in general, even pushing it to the wall, th those are good opportunities. So watch Qualcomm and Disney. Uh, like I'm saying, it's showing strength in the fact it did this where market was selling off and it went up. You want to see how this pattern persists and what it keeps doing, but this is, you know, rotational. But the fact it's holding up, earnings is around the corner. This is just overall looking very, very bullish, and I like it. So I want to start seeing plays. And let me tell you the trick I'm going to do. If you remember, before here, I think we got some July 19th contracts. They went up about 300% or 200%. We sold out of them. I'm going to go back and try to find those same contracts. I'll go look through the history and I'm going to see what I spent and if I could get closer to the money and what I even sold them for and even now see what we could do with August or September. But this could even be a good earnings play. So there is that. You got, oh, that's RGLD, but you could watch gold. As far as the options, let's get to the Boeing plays. I think those are going to be interesting because now these were the ones that we got last week. And this is what I was saying. It's crazy what they did because we bought these at what, 20 something cents not too long ago, if you guys remember, around around 22, 23 cents. And then, you know, they went up and down, up and down, and they've been doing the same thing. I've been holding them all the way through. And you guys could see, man, you could just go back and forth on these contracts if you really wanted to. But I'm watching for these. If, once these go, you know, to 10 cents, I'm going to see what we could buy for 20 cents if I'm going to be, when I'm when, again, I'm going to be spreading them out all throughout the dates. And now it doesn't mean I'll do them on tomorrow or whatever. It's, it's all throughout the timing and taking advantage of, these types of moves, you know, this is just signaling something. This is letting you know, you, you know, the puts aren't doing this for a reason, but being the short term and how Boeing moves, this is what it's just killing volatility. But if there is a big move and as it's just showing, you know, volatility crushes, but the fact that it does make moves down is showing you something, but it's only getting so high. That is why you want to get closer to the money because then you start to see the ones closer to the money they've at least went past the those those top prices but i like those i'm in those doesn't mean i'm, I'm gonna buy more of those but I'm, I'm in them so i do like them to a degree i grabbed the july 12 330 uh put i was gonna get uh because again i think i have these 330s or i have a 320 we got those for 40 cents they're break even again we got them the same time as the other ones that's the other chart but what i did now on this account I grabbed the call, so I spent up $47 on the $37,750 call over here, and it, it still went down. And, and if you even look at the time where we bought them, and a lot of people were confused by this, but this is what I'm saying. You can't get frustrated with, with Boeing, and that's why you don't put all of your egg Again, if you're buying expensive contracts and throwing all your eggs into one basket on this, you're going to be in for a disgusting surprise. Take a look when we purchased this, 1.38 p.m. That's pretty much almost the bottom right there very very close to it and the contract still you know after it went up whatever it did after hours it, it still it, it actually went down from when we bought it and that's what could happen you could buy a call it will go up it went up two dollars from there and you could still get that volatility crush but i like those again 
I want to get calls because now I, I have other sets of puts. If you think about it, I probably have like, I, I think I have over a thousand bucks in puts spread out through all the other accounts. And I'm even including old, old graveyard plays, but you know, I spent money on them. So, you know, putting $47 on this call and, you know, I'm trying to get the short terms because if there is one of these shorter term pops, I want to just take advantage of either a Delta move or at least it, it gaining value and not falling victim to what some of those contracts did that we saw in the weeklies. But then I also got the put towards the end of the day. I wanted more exposure on it. Again, this is, I wanted even puts on the market in general, but I, I wasn't feeling that bearish. I still need to see more stuff. So I grabbed another Boeing. Uh, again, Boeing doesn't have to, it, it could not move with the market, which is, uh, which is the risk you take. But I like this one there too. I grabbed a 330 with the shorter duration, but I still think these are far of the money. But these are my place markers just in case anything happens. And I want to look at the other ones. Next one, we play the NVIDIAs. I still like all the NVIDIAs. Uh, it again contingent on the, the chip makers moving that's all you need but it's holding the ratio you know this is six dollars at the money for 50 bucks that is exactly the same and that's what i'm saying it was the same ratio in the morning we bought the 180s for like 40 bucks 50 bucks and you know they're, they're worthless uh that's just you know we bought them way too early in the morning you know we got we got the 180s you know we got them at like 40 cents and they they just plummeted uh, you know, they bounced a little bit, but but that was about it. But it was it's holding the same ratio, which is interesting. I think it's because there's one less day. But the minute the chip makers start moving, these are great ratios. And the fact is, NVIDIA is more volatile of the other stocks in terms of you could get a delta move and it, it could still do a, a, a lot. So I like that next one. And the final one here, McDonald's. I grabbed a 210, but I hated it uh, just because you guys know me. I'm, I'm not a big fan. And some of you guys said I got in too early. And I did, uh, but it was, you know, it was about 30%. I paid 13 cents. I think I grabbed two of them. Yeah, two of them for 13 cents. And, you know, I got them at 1 p.m., still pretty early in the day. They did hit, you know, 18 cents at one point. They came down when the market did a little bit more. But I don't like them because it is a 210. However, I think that's really high on McDonald's. But the fact that it was clipping there this morning, it, it puts it in play. Otherwise, I want the 207.50s, but those are still too expensive. They were at two bucks this morning, but if these could come down to like 30 cents, we could be interested in those. So I'm going to be watching that. I don't like the other time frames on it. I still think McDonald's is kind of expensive there, but we'll, we'll see what they are in the morning and we'll go through there. But that is your plays and your watch list. Let's get to the keys of the day or wait, keys for tomorrow. So deja vu. Will this be like the last G20? And we talked about this. I even saw other people talking about this today, which kind of got me a little excited because I'm like, hmm. But this was the last G20. If you've been watching the watch list videos, you know I've said this a lot, but now it's kind of eerie how similar it looks to a degree. Uh, you know, if there is a downside move and it's big tomorrow, that would be deja vu. And that's what we need to be watching for. And, and this is what the a big key I have. And this is what I'm going to explain with everything, my friends. We're not trying to predict, but react. The dollar move tells us bearish or bullish. Oil tells us bearish or bullish. Bonds tell us bearish or bullish. That is it. You're seeing these factors and trying to decide. That's why we're monitoring certain stuff. It, you know, If you say, is the market going to go up or down? I don't know. That Otherwise, if I didn't know, I'd buy a lot of whatever direction. But the whole point is, even some of now the bond stuff, even like the repo rate, there is a certain phenomena setting up right now where even at these tops and everything we're doing, we could set up for a massive rally. But then at the same time, you still have the exact same scenario setting up from here. And if you remember when I said with oil, we, we got to watch out for this. So it's about being able to react, react because again, it's better to be late than wrong. Even if we're late, you could be able to get into play. You know, think about, look at Boeing. Boeing, you could get into it right now, $10 cheaper from last week. You are very, very late, but it's very, very cheap. Isn't that weird? So I'm going to keep my eyes out for this one. I like it a lot. I think it's going to be golden. Uh, it, it has, you know, just in general of what this could tell us, because if we don't see anything down, it'll throw that out the window and it could set up for a lot of bullishness, you know, assuming other things don't happen. But now with what happened with the trade war, people are like, why did it come down this and that? I even said right off the morning, I even told people, you know, they're like, should I cut out puts? Should I do this? I did make the call early on because I wanted some of that cheap exposure. But at the end of the day, I said, just chill. Well, wait, it doesn't matter what happened there. You're going to need, because again, there wasn't immediate moves. The dollar and the dollar, there was moves there. And that's what I'm going to show you. Some of them backtracked, which again, puts this into play, puts this whole scenario back into play. The only big difference people will say was rate hikes. Uh, again, it was either rate, the, the, the Fed was hiking rates. Powell had a different tone of hawkishness versus dovishness. But again, let me break it to you guys. All that stuff could be true and going on. 
it occurred at different times, but it doesn't mean the market won't react the same because sometimes, as sadly as it may be, this could have been a, even a technical move that was facilitated by some things, but if the wrong jawbone occurs, it could still bring stuff down. But that's where I'm saying don't write this off the table, but don't think it's going to be a carbon copy. Again, deja vu is oftentimes just a phenomenon. So watch how that stuff is going to play out. But everything I said, I said, I need five days to watch it. You know, again, please allow three to five business days for your order to process. You guys will order stuff. You go to the bank to do stuff, whatever. Even, man, the DMV, uh, you know, imagine all of this stuff. Uh, you guys need business days to process this stuff. So the same thing's going to happen with finances. You know, don't think it's any different. Yeah, stocks could move big, but that's, you know, how big do you want and what it's going to be? If there's going to be a meaningful move up or down, you need to see what the bigger stuff does. So I'm looking at bonds and all that. It's going to take time to process and kind of ripple through, and it could take longer than five days. I'm just saying at the very minimum, but the issue and the key word is business days. We have a holiday coming up, and when the market could be you know void of liquidity or other things but that could also have a positive effect but even like we discussed last week it puts on that headline risk so keep your guys' eyes out with with all this stuff in general and what it will take is moves you know even surprisingly tlt did not move really as expected it did come down a little bit you want to see how it reacts because if you do look at the last g20 it was holding into it and then it popped up so even today though with that move it didn't move up or down. Give it some more time. Bonds were very, very interesting. And now the last thing I wanted to show you guys, you know, one, watch the bonds. If they, again, if these start coming down again, it puts us back. Dude, the five year is at one point, or excuse me, the two years right back above two, but the 30 year is still very, very low. And it, it's still putting us in this unique environment. But now this is what I really, you know, watch for the confirmation. I said this yesterday. I said, watch with the dollar to go up because the dollar is going to affect bonds. And now that's could affect the price of oil, but the price of oil can affect bonds too, which came first, the chicken or the egg, pretty much. That's why you need these days to process to see which is having the biggest ripple effect and what is the lagger and leader. But watch the dollar and, and that effect it could do. But the key was the, the move it made, you know, pretty much, you know, coming into the, the futures, everything, the dollar just had a huge rip up. And it just kept going up uh, even massively from what we saw last night. But remember last night, which gave us confirmation and, and Chinese stocks went up a lot, the Shanghai composite. But take a look here at China. This is the issue that I want to bring up. Remember, I said if it does gap down here and it started down there, that was a real big political signal that there actually was progress with the trade talks. But now it literally came right back up and it's still back at this level, you know, these even June 19th. Uh, levels and even right here last time when we saw the market kind of hesitate a little May 19th or May 10th excuse me again it started coming back down when when the yuan started weakening remember there was talks of trade and the concessions that and I made a video and I even said they're using that as a political tool that's when you started to see some decline so that could have an effect or uh, again I'm watching for it but this is the point it erased all again now you're seeing it moving now it could strengthen a little bit but this was that move. It gapped down, and that means big strengthening of the yuan. But towards the the, the day today, it started running up, and then you even see it's it it reversed most of it. So yes, that that was a good knee jerk reaction. But if that stays up, this is where I'm saying the rally and everything's good. But there is some stuff. But I don't want to react too soon. I do get fearful from this, and you know you don't want to get that FOMO. But at the same time, there is stuff that needs to adjust. But we have these factors again. You can see volume steady increasing. We'll see what goes from there. But we know these factors. We are going to be able to get on and get on them and react. So watch out for that tomorrow. You even had Trump uh, announce more tariffs or four billion more tariffs on EU goods. That could have effect. Watch towards the close. But I'm waiting. And remember, I said. The market will come down if there's a trade deal. There wasn't a trade deal. There was literally renegotiations or, or coming back to talk. So that is, it, it puts us back there. It's kind of in the middle ground, but we're going to see what happens now and how does the market react. And with the bonds not moving and the bonds not doing this if, over the next couple of days, this is what I'm watching for. If the bonds continue on the path they were on prior to this, it's just showing that, you know, that wasn't good enough for, for the Fed. And again, it, that's just showing that, hey, the market could believe whatever it wants. But if Jay Powell says, no, 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 there's no deal. You guys didn't make a deal. You just are, are re-talking again. It's just as risky. We, we don't have time to play this. And he, and he does his thing. And, you know, it would appease the markets. But, again, what type of effect will that have? So we're going to see, I, again, any surprisers are going to be the ne negative aspect. But I'm going to leave it there, guys. Make sure you are subscribed. Drop your thumbs up. And I better see you there in the morning. Let's go.